Here I am, Leon C, a.k.a. Morpheus. You are now listening to the Academy of Wow Men. And why you are here, you're going to get something that's enlightening and it's going to at least help you. If it doesn't, well, you need to go check your thinking and probably even your IQ level because these are easy things that are generally common. We just can't pick it out and get it. Now, there's three subjects that we need to talk about that is very vital in the society that you live in. Okay? Now, before we begin, you can always say that this is my disclaimer, but I get tired of repeating myself. This is actually, excuse me, did a little, like, little yawning there. Did a lot of work. I um, did another interview with Brian. There's going to be at least two or three of them. You're going to like them. They're very pretty good. Those are two big discussions that we had and very hilarious. We talked about things that I never spoken about on uh, social media. So you might want to check that out. And it's coming pretty soon. So bear in mind, it's going to be here eventually. A little after this. But the disclaimer is I don't condone violence all right i respect the police and the authorities of law enforcement and safety because it's a hard world out here and there is some as i speak right now there is a lot of disputes in new york about the law system and of course the increase in violence that is going on over there so I understand on the other side of the pendulum, people are fearful, they're fearful of the lack of, you could say, protection. But over here we're gonna talk about something else. And again, it's not that I condone violence, but I look at things from the man's point of view, from reality. So this discussion is gonna be about men in general, and it might be a little bit of woman in there. So if you're a female, yeah, you're gonna have, I'm gonna talk about you too. Like I tell you before, I am a balanced guy and, and it's a equal playing field for everyone. So it's not hatred or bigotry. It has nothing to do with misogyny or uh, misandry of any kind. No, this is basically talking about the truth and facts that pre we probably already know. We just don't want to talk about. But again, there's something else too that I think I don't want to talk about this yet. I think I'm going to I'm gonna talk about you. I'm gonna talk about this in the uh, in the audio. You're gonna hear it from uh, in the interview with Brian. But he says something that's still it's still uh, I never really thought about. I never thought about. It. As a matter of fact, let me give you a teaser. I'm gonna give you a teaser. Okay. In the interview, we were talking about the sexual dynamics between man and woman. Okay, that's what the discussion was about. And I really went in hard on that one. You know, I was. Uh, <laughs> I guess you could, say, you could say in rare form, <laughs> okay? But he said something that I'm gonna let you hear because he asked the question, but he was serious about it. So you can say this is a preview. He said, do you, I ever have a down day? I was like, what do you mean down day? I, 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 what do you mean do I have a down day? What he was saying, do I, um, do I not perform? Meaning, do I get tired? Is my stamina to the point where I can't take care of my girls? That's what he was saying. You know, is it every time where it's too much for me? You know, I get exhausted or I want to give up or I don't feel like doing it that day. And you heard I just said day, right? Excuse me, there's some noise in the background here. It's kind of funny. I go against this. I go against the narrative. So I'm not going to fulfill you with everything, but I go against the narrative. Like when I say I'm going to this thing they call make love or donkey duck, so to speak, in intimacy. I don't say we're going to do this tonight. I say we're going to do this today during the daylight, during the day hour. Most music is always talking about at night. You know, some songs. If you're lonely now. You know, uh, 
wait until tonight, girl. You know, things like that. <laughs> you know, for example, Brian Midnight. You know, tonight's tonight, baby. You know, just about every song is always talking about tonight. Not too many songs that I know of are I've ever heard of talk about let's make love today during the daylight hour. It's kind of funny the programming that that music gives you that it it modifies your mind to think in a certain way. And there, you'd be surprised there are people who go along with it. They'll say, well, yeah, you know, at night, me and my girl, we that old expression, we knock in the boots. It's always at night you know, always. You know, in the uh, the sneakiness and the cover, the obscurity of darkness that they want to do something. It's very amazing when you think about it. So I'm the type of guy or person that will say I'd make love during the day or I'll make love today because it's any time of day. You know, it could be morning, noon and night. It could be any time. You know, when I get home and I get down for my business, you know, it's going to be 9 a.m. It could be 12 p.m. You know, during lunch hour, it can be five o'clock. 5 p.m. Not necessarily going to be at night. Just something to throw out there. Something for us to think about. Because there are some people who always think, well, we got to, you know, when I get home from work, I'll wait till 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night. We're going to smash at night. You know, we're going to, I'm going to smash her at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. You know, do a sneaky link at, you know, between 12 and 3 o'clock in the morning. You know, this, this sort of stupid, dumb, childish mentality. Not over here. <laughs> Just something for you to think about. So there's, that's a little preview of our discussion. And you're going to get the audio. Just be prepared for it. So let's blend over to, let's see what I can get to, the violence I was talking about that I don't condone. Okay. Now, I'm not saying do what I'm telling you to do. I'm just speaking the logical, psychological fact. All right. That's it. So let me give you a breakdown of what I'm talking about by giving an example first and I'm going to go into the discussion that way you have a clear comprehension of what I'm going to talk about, okay? There are some places in your city and state that is known almost universally where you shouldn't go. It's a violent place. When you go to that area or before you go there, there are some people who will tell you, oh, you going over here? You going to that? town, you're going to that city, you're going to that neighborhood, don't leave your keys in the ignition. Don't park your car over there. Don't bring your Ferrari over there. You know, don't, don't, uh, be careful. You know, keep going down the road. If you get a breakdown, keep going. <laughs> and if your, if your tire gets a flat, don't stand by the side of the road or don't park your car and try to change your flat, even though the neighborhood seems safe. You keep rolling even when your tire is flat, because if you stop, you're going to get mugged. Somebody's going to break into your car and take the keys. They're going to mug you. They're going to take your money. They're going to they're going to threaten you. Or a gang's going to come out and try to take your car and everything that you have. Or they'll rip you out of your car while you're driving. Okay? Very unique that we hear these things. And what ends up happening is most people aren't going to um, do that. They're not going to go down that path. They're going to realize, okay, I was told this is a dangerous neighborhood. I'm going to keep my guard because this is, I don't want to go down there and get my car jacked. I don't want to end up in the hospital or meeting uh, God through the Grand Reaper um, actually delivering me up to the heavens because I was a stupid person. Now, lesson is this. There are just some men and I'm talking about men in general. There are women too. Oh, definitely women. That's why I can't even begin to start with them. Lack of accountability because we give women a, a kid glove. We're going to talk about that in a moment. But the reason is, is because we don't have experience with violence. There's something about having an understanding of when there's a, when you do something, there's a consequence. And it's a beautiful thing. It, it will teach you and it will train you what not to do. I've noticed that there are things that men do. And I, I hate to continue to repeat myself. And it, it's not because I need to blow myself up. Just, you know, a little background on myself for some of you who don't know who I am. Um, I've been in battle. I've been in battle. 
Um, some of you have listened to my audios about me in the past when I was a kid and dealing with bullies and I had a rough life. And not only that, uh, my competition, me being a martial artist, pumping iron and all that great stuff, very physically active guy, right? For various reasons. This, and I don't want to spill too much of the beans, but it's, it's kind of, when you think about it, that's one of the general reasons why I have the ability to have these three companions that I have because they look at me, they're around me, they know that I can protect them, which is a very key thing. And the beauty that they're not from America. Okay, you know, there are still genuine, homegrown, natural women who look for dominant leader, alpha type of men. And it's not, again, it's not about your money. It's not about your money and it's not about you having a boat in a long Lamborghini and a, uh, a stretch limousine and these sort of sorts of things. It's about you generally being a male in your own form. So that's that's key note right there because a lot of men aren't like that. You know, so many men who are they're they're chubby, they're flubby. They don't have a six pack, but they do got a they've got a powder keg down there. And there are some women who would deal with them. But you have to understand these men aren't their first choice. They're not. You got to understand that there's a lot of guys who think that they're great men because they they're famous. They got clout. They're, uh, you know, they're making money. But really, they're just door number two. They're just somebody who this woman decided to settle down with and she'll make it work. Because there's a thing called auto-suggestion. Psychology is a very powerful thing where we will convince ourselves that we made the right decision and we'll be satisfied with it right there. Even though in the back of our black box, we realize it was the wrong decision. Okay, so these guys, these guys would normally think that. However, getting back to the real point of the conversation here. I understand that there's a thing called um, fear and knowing that you're going to get a certain reaction out of what you do. Now, I'm going to refer this to something that we all are accustomed to, such as driving and traffic, road rage, yes, road rage, and how people are disrespectful out there. They cut you off. They won't use their turn signal. They will uh, they'll jump right in front of you. They'll try to race on the side of you. They'll try to jump into your lane. Just plenty of things that put your life and maybe your family in jeopardy. Okay, we're all familiar with that. And some of us, we are pissed off often. Or you have this person who's driving 20 miles per hour and the speed limit is 55. And you got to get to a meeting. Or you got to get to work early in the morning. And there you are cussing and yelling. We are all familiar with that. Okay. But we're going to talk about something. And we're going to flip the script here. And again, I'm not condoling violence. But I'm going to tell you the absolute fact about life and humans themselves. Humans know violence. They respect it. And they will fear it at the same time. No matter what type of man or woman that is. See, men, men won't get into it even if they can defend themselves. And even if they can fight or they're great at what they do, they rather avoid it. They rather not get into a battle where they have to pull out their blowhorn or they have to get into a fisticuff. Okay, and I'm going to be honest with you. I enjoy fisticuffing, but there are also conditions, there are risks in that situation where someone will not play fair. There will be someone who will say, oh, I'm not getting ready to fight this beast of a man. I'm just going to go ahead and blow him away. So it's risky. So even I myself would not want to deal with this type of drama. But here's the catch. Let's put that aside right there. We all understand that, right? We're adults. We're adults. We're going to talk about the science behind this. I absolutely know that it is needed and it will change the dynamic of just about a lot of things that people do. For example, let me give you an example. If a woman... Just for example, if a woman is yelling in a man's face and pointing her finger at his chest and probably doing damage to him in one way or the other, oftentimes she knows that the police are going to show up. She knows that she can get away with it, oftentimes. 
And just because he's a man, he's automatically in trouble. But if she knew, if she picked up and dialed the number, you know, nine, one, whatever, whatever. Okay. And she wasn't going to get no response typically after she's getting in his face, you know, her daddy's not on the phone or her brother, something like that. The chances of her getting in this guy's face is going to be way less, especially if this guy hauls off and she's going to think twice about it. As a matter of fact, she will automatically change her perspective. She won't sit there and yell in his face because she has to be responsible. Listen, 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 please don't hear me. Listen, she automatically is made to be responsible for her actions. A lot of domestic violence, I'm in. And again, it's not to say that the police or the law should not get involved. What I am telling you psychologically and true, and I'm going to break it down even further. There would be changes in a little bit of a better respect in the environment if they did not get involved and you had to be responsible for your actions because you're going to talk less. You're going to you're going to act straight. You're not going to disrespect people because they're going to lay you down in a couple of seconds. They're going to lay you down and the police are going to look at you and keep on rolling and you're going to have to straighten up your act. As a matter of fact, the authority will be that person who you get in the face. The person that you are disrespecting, that's the person who's of authority because they can lay you down. You're not going to talk crazy. You're not going to sit here and disrespect them and you're not going to cut them off. Let's talk about the traffic for a moment here. See, in traffic is the same thing. People will cut you off. They will not use the turn signal. They'll jump in front of you. They will do very dangerous things in the car. They'll speed up, then they'll slow down. They'll go 20 miles per hour. They will uh, They will do the unnecessary, you know, get off the off ramp, get back on there just to piss you off. And so if you are, if it was where there was all bets off, and you have every open door to check this person, maybe to even pull up to him, pull out a car. I understand somebody might have a blow horn, but if this was on a constant basis where it's known, if you act a fool on the road, somebody's going to deal with you. The odds and the the odds and the chances of you acting stupid is going to be way less. I gave an example. It's just like. You're going into a state or a town and everybody tell you it's violent over there. You're going to be on guard. So when you're driving on the highway or on the road and you are warned that if you try to cut people off, you drive dangerously, you drive 30 miles per hour in a speed limit 70 right in front of somebody. Or if you try to run someone off the road that they're going to deal with you or if it was violent enough where they had a blow horn and they blow your window out. The chances of a person driving like that will be much less. Sometimes if you, the law isn't in a way specifically, but sometimes the law can be a hindrance. I'm, I'm actually being honest with you. Sometimes the authorities are, you could say if a police officer gets involved in something, it kind of pampers the situation. They become the mediator of two people who haven't learned their lesson. You know, it, and it perpetuates on a constant basis because oftentimes People need to meet consequences. They need to know that they did something wrong. They need to realize that they need to stop doing something that's stupid. That's just like the violence in the town and city or that that uh, area or even the neighborhood. See, what happened is that neighborhood rectified. Listen, open up your damn ears. That neighborhood rectified respect to the point where everybody knew it was dangerous or don't go there. They rectified that. They have they have permeated and let the world know, our people, hey, don't you come to this town or city because if you do, we're going to deal with you. That same, it could be, it, look, it, of course, it's negative respect, but that same respect is valid and it makes sense in every other facet of our life whereas when you're driving crazy or you dealing with men certain caliber of men you've been warned that you don't cross a certain line and you're going to be dealt with see the problem with the world or you could say especially you could say america in general but there's other there's other places it's not just america but generally america there's a lot of 
pudgy, soft, mama raised, panty wearing dudes who call themselves men. They don't have the experience of getting their jaw cracked. They don't. They don't have the they don't have the experience of somebody picking them up off the ground with their legs dangling and telling them that they did something wrong. Not that they're going to delete them or put them in the grave, nothing like that, but just simply straighten them out. They don't get that often. It's going to be got a loud out here. So uh, there's a lot of traffic and cars are driving past. I told you I sit on my patio. And even if my driveway is so long, because I got like a black fence, <laughs> I guess that's a clue to where I'm at. But everybody's going to start looking for black fences. So anyhow, <clears throat> even though I got a, like a black fence that leads all the way down there at the edge of my uh, my driveway, it's still kind of loud down. And people driving past, the, the the microphone picks up everything. So you still hear trucks and some cars and things. It kinda, it's kind of irritating, but I deal with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sitting out here, so it's all me. Instead of having my studio on the inside, I'd rather have it out here because I'm a very natural guy. and It's, it's a lot better with the... Uh, technology and the wind visors and stuff that I usually use. Here come a big truck now. It's damn ridiculous. Anyhow, there's men who they jabber just like a girl. Now, I'm not, I'm not talking about anybody specifically, but you can probably imagine in your own world, in your life, of who you can think about who's just like this. They talk like girls. And they definitely talk bad about men or other people. They drag them through the mud. And a lot of times they can do this because nobody's grabbing them by the lapels. You know, nobody, the way men used to deal with years ago, how men really deal with their conflict is through fisticuff. And whoever get knocked down is the one who loses. Now you friends afterwards, you're not going to talk stuff about that guy again. As a matter of fact, this individual will not even mention you. Because you just whooped his ass to the moon. So he's going to shut his mouth and he's going to be quiet. A lot of times, this is the reality of the world in general that you live in in the West because we're too pampered, we're too soft, we're too... We get away with dirt. And how you get away with dirt is not dealing with consequences. Consequences is a great teacher and a mentor. If there was more action and there was more consequences, we wouldn't have to deal with people jabbering off the jaw. We don't have to deal with the, the constant struggle of idiots and morons who are on the road and are who you work with. Just like uh, the rumor. If there were rumors, like where you work at, maybe in your office, you're in your cubicle and you know people are talking, they're going to talk about you anyway, which is, it happens every day, but they talk about you in such a bad way. You got somebody who really don't like you because they don't want to like you. Now, if you confront this person, I'm not saying do it. Remember, I already gave you my disclaimer. I'm not condoning violence. I'm just speaking psychology and truth here. If you told this person, you know what? Forget about this. Let's go outside. We're going to we're gonna hash this out right now. We're going to hash this out right now. You talking sh about me? Let's go. I'm tired of this bull crap. You said, we're going to go outside right now. And y'all, and you grab this person. Y'all getting ready to go outside and dance for a little while. Okay. There's two things that's going to happen in that situation. And I'm, not, I'm not talking about when you get dirty, you want to pull out your blow horn or some mace or maybe a taser. No, I'm, I'm actually sitting there fist the cup and you swinging at each other. Of course, somebody's going to get a little hurt. But, hey, that's the way it, that's the way it goes. In boxing, you're going to get your eyes slit a little bit, but you'll live to see another day. It happens, but you shouldn't have ran your mouth to begin with. But the point is, you're going to learn something during that situation. As a matter of fact, you're going to face reality. The, the first thing that this person's going to realize that's getting pulled out of the chair is that, they did something wrong and they ran their mouth too far. That's one thing. And they're going to think to themselves that, wait a minute, should I do this? I don't think I should do this. Maybe I should have shut my damn mouth. Of course. Of course. That's going to be the first reaction. Like, oh, we're really doing this. This is real. Yeah, it got real. It got real. And the second thing is you're going to nip it in the bud. It's done. Meaning you got your ass whooped. It's finished. You can't go back and talk crap after that. As a matter of fact, you can't jump on social media. You can't sit here and talk to anybody in your cubicle and talk bad about this person because they just whooped your ass. You're done. You can't say they're a scrub. You can't say they're they're uh, ill. You know they're poor. They're lazy. You can't do it. You cannot. 
You can't open up your mouth afterwards. They just squashed you and they squashed you as a problem in their life or a bug. Do you understand what I'm saying? The only reason why people get away with this behavior is because nobody's whooping their ass. It's because, listen, because you have too many interventions. You have too many distractions. You have too much law in between where they want to sue you. They want to prosecute you. Uh, immediately, they want to just throw you in handcuffs and put you away. It solves nothing. It solved nothing. If the only con, if our only, here it is, if our only referee and so called daddy is the law system who has to always come in and play the mediator, nothing's going to get solved. I'm, re I'm honest with you, nothing's going to get solved. You say, well, the only thing I fear is just going to jail. I don't want to catch a case. I don't want to get sued. I don't want to get prosecuted. That's the only thing somebody's going to say. You know, most people will say that, especially in the West, dumbass people. You know, that's the only thing I'll say. Well, I don't want to get prosecuted. You know, the police going to be here and put me in handcuffs. Solves not a goddamn thing. And as a matter of fact, it makes your life worse because now you got like two days away or maybe a week or something like that. Then you got to go through processing and whatever else that they do. Right now you got a record. If you take your ass outside and dance for like five or 10 minutes, because it might end early, is there going to be no nine rounds? Somebody's going to get knocked out or knocked down. OK, you're not going to run your mouth again. You're not going to put your hands on them. As a matter of fact, you're not going to cut them off. If two things are going to happen. You're going to avoid them because they just gave you a black eye and you're going to shut your mouth because now you're missing a tooth and everybody's laughing at you. Or y'all going to be best friends. You're going to tell that person, I respect you now. I am sorry I ran my mouth. I know times have changed, but I've been in plenty of situations like that where I ragged these dudes in dirt in my past. I put, I gave them a business and made a joke out of them to the point where when they got up off the ground, you know how you get up, they got, it's called the plumber's crack. Have you ever seen a plumber's crack where he's bending over the pipes or something like that? And you see his uh, you see his rear end, you know, you see his ass sticking out above his pants. They got beat down so bad when they getting up, their pants is literally down on or you could say, you know, revealing all their cheeks back there. Just by the fact that they got, you know, tangled around like that and then they're running basically on their hands and knees to get away from me. And then, of course, a week later, it's like, man, I'm, I'm sorry, man. Man, I, I, I wasn't, you know, I was, you know, I was out of my mind. I was just thinking that, you know, you cool, man, with that left hook. You know, you got me with that right hook. It's a done deal. You know, he's not in prison or uh, the hospital. I'm not in prison nor the hospital. Right. He can move on with his life. No track record. You know, the police didn't get involved. The fact is he learned his lesson. I squashed it. He was done. Now he wants to buy me lunch. You want to? You want? You want another example? Some of you, uh, I like watching old movies because they they teach a lot. These new movies and this junk that you got nowadays and music is bull crap. I'm gonna talk about that in just a couple of seconds. They don't teach you nothing but to make you stupid and feminized. That's what these movies and music do to you. This common generation, old movies and old music got some. They have some teaching lessons in it. They they have some fact. Because that's where the value and the quality of life of life is, because it's not here today. Let me say that again. The past is where the quality of life hit life is and lessons and real uh, uh, moving forward knowledge. But as far as what's going on today, we don't have it today. It's not in this new generation. All you got is people singing to dumb you down and movies that's going to make you dumb and feminize you and, and make you you know overly sensitive and emotional and illogical. That's all you got today. But anyhow, there's a movie called Back to the Future. Everybody know about that. You should with Michael J. Fox, Back to the Future. Do y'all remember that dude named Beth? Or a uh, butthead. It's called, hey, butthead, butthead. Right? With a cane or something like that. He was, uh, he was Michael J. Fox's bully at the time. I think his name was Marty. <laughs> right? The actor Marty. And he kept, he had to deal with Biff, his almost his entire life through every uh, dimension change that he went into. It went, if he went back to the future, he went to the alternate reality, or if he went to the far future, he would always deal with a certain version of 
Beth. So there came a time where he got tired of dealing with Beth, and I think it was his father has something to do with it. I think his name was Mick Fly or something like that. Mick Fly! You know, the nerd with the black hair. And his dad was cool after he beat his butt. But anyhow, there came a uh, there came a point where he had to fight Biff back. And he embarrassed Biff so bad and beat him down so bad. Where he reversed the effect the effects of what Biff was doing to him to the point where towards the end of the movie, I think it was probably Back to the Future 2 or 3. It was one of them. Biff was outside waxing his car waxing his car and doing what McFly wanted him to do now. And he was going in there saying, Hey, how many wax of coke do you want? You know, you want me to go and wax it again? And McFly was like, yeah, you know, you know, you missed the spot. I want another coat of wax on it. Stop the problem all of a sudden. Now, of course we know people aren't going to necessarily wash your shoes and want to come over and wax your car and, you know, feed your kids for you and, you know, paint your house and, you know, uh, what's that, you know, buy you groceries and stuff like that to apologize for that bad behavior. But the point is, they're going to stop. They're not going to talk bull crap to you no more. They're going to go a different route. Either that or pick on someone else. Either way, you solved your problem because you had to pick them up, let them see the skies and the heaven above and bring them da back down to earth in a matter of seconds where they lose breath and they're meeting the ground with such force where they can't think straight but see the stars, every star on the flag, which is probably like 50 or something like that. So they end up stopping their bull crap. As a matter of fact, sometimes that's what, it, what they need. Sometimes that's what they need. If a lot of the law system would not get involved and people had to defend themselves, I guarantee you, they will straighten up tomorrow. I can guarantee you, you will have a different psychological effect in your environment where people are going to be very cautious of what they say. They're not going to step on your toes. They're going to be walking with the, with the straight backbone. You're not going to hear no beef on social media. You're not. You're not going to hear people talking about each other because when you meet that person, they're going to hurt you and then you're going to shut your damn mouth and you will never say nothing else to a lot of times it's because people are spoon fed. They're soft. Now, some of you men who are real men know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, I'm not saying that we should be violent towards each other and that the law is useless. I'm saying it's too much of daddy getting in the middle and getting in the way because we're too much at fear of the law and getting sued and being prosecuted. When the fact is, when you take your raunchy, you know, redundant, retarded ass outside and get dusted up for a few minutes. You're going to shut your damn mouth probably for the rest of your life. We ain't going to hear nothing from you. You're going to quit this BS. You're going to stop. And you're not going to think about it again because here's the problem too. I mean, here's the solution. Not only is that person not going to start beef with you anymore, they're going to think that that might happen for somebody else too. Meaning if they start running their mouth and they do something silly, somebody else is going to do the same thing out of fear and fear in this situation is respectful because some men don't get that men don't really understand like they should that there's going to be consequences behind their actions and if they're just worried about the police stepping in and you know the judge and the law oftentimes you're not there's nothing to be solved they're not going to approach not because they have a respect for that man that they're talking about our people our family whoever else they're just not going to do it because they don't want to get sued they don't want to get a, they don't want to catch a case, but they're still going to go around and still be the same. Listen, they're still going to be talking bad about other people and thinking that they're the macho man. They're going to still be acting uh, disrespectful and you can call it chaotic towards the environment. There's no lesson to be involved. They're just worrying about the law. It That's it. They need to know is, see what happens. Here's the fact. And I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. They need to know that it's just not the law or the police that can straighten you out when you do something bad. They need to know that whoever that they're dealing with or who they disrespect or what they do in the environment, real people can damage your ass. Real people can put you down. Real people can slap the piss out of your mouth to the point where you'll forget your name in a matter of five seconds and they try to figure out where the hell you are. I've seen people get jaw jacked to the point where they're standing there and they don't even know where they are because they got hit so hard. They're like, oh my God. 
you okay? You okay? That's all you hear like five people around them trying to wake them up. You okay? Oh, where where am I? What 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 happened? What happened? Shouldn't have been talking, right? You shouldn't have been talking. And and next thing you know, you would never, as a matter of fact, you would never find that person talking crap about anybody ever again. These people, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to tell you the facts here or what I know. I've been there, done that. The I've seen it. These individuals, if he don't have glasses on during that time and he's out of shape and stupid looking, give him about two years. When you see this guy again, he's going to have glasses on. He's going to be talking straight. You know, he's acting like he got some good sense. He want to put the past behind him. You know, now he's, you know, he's staying at home. He's just staying in front of his computer system, minding his own damn business because he know. He understands now that there is consequences behind bad behavior. The problem with mothers raising sons. Here is your problem right here. When a father is raising a son and our daughter, he shows her or him there are consequences behind your big damn mouth. Sometimes there's a, there's a swift pop in the lip. There's a swift pop on the head or a, a swift pop on the little bitty ass. Why is this? Because they need to know that there is danger and there is consequences behind your behavior. Besides the police and the law, there is consequences. And the father would do this often to where this child, listen, that's why the father needs to be at home. This is why I always say the father is the judge. He's a police. He's a lawyer. And he's also, I can say this, he's also God at home because he has to merge and put things together in perspective. The father is the head of the home. He can do things that mothers will not do. And therefore, when that child is with that father, he they're going to automatically have a certain respect towards the environment, towards the law system, and towards everybody else. They know that there is danger if they misbehave, if they disrespect someone. Do you understand? Mothers on the often, on a higher percentage, there are some mothers who will pop the lip, who will pop that head, or who will smack that ass and say, shut your mouth. There are some mothers who will do that. They'll roll up a newspaper or, you know, get a switch or a belt. Again, I'm not condoning violence. I already gave you my uh, disclaimer. So if you're here trying to be a Karen, get your ass on somewhere else. This ain't your channel. Mind your own goddamn business. Because, or, or maybe you might want to get this type, type of consequences. You know, you're running your mouth and you need somebody to lift you up off the ground and teach you something. So check your ass and check yourself. I've already told you. This ain't condoning. These are facts of psychology. I'm talking about reality here. If you can't handle it, shut your damn mouth. Find another channel. The reality of it is there is some mother that will dis discipline their children. They will. As soon as a child get out of line, there's a switch, there's a belt, or popping them out, whatever that they need to do to let that child know, hey, fire burns. Ice is cold. <laughs> okay? You know, there's nothing for you to step on on the ground. You're going to fall to your face. But it's very rare. Most women coddle their kids. They will fight the world from disciplining their kids. Their kids don't even know what a belt is or a switch or a pop on the mouth. So what happens is these kids don't know any consequences. What happens is they'll grow up and they'll disrespect everybody, including the police. This is why on the news, you hear girls, especially women, girls, where they get on the bus or the metro bus. And y'all have seen that before. They'll get in this bus driver's face and start talking crazy because their mama didn't raise them right. And there are some men who's not going to tolerate it. And guess what? He give her the left, right, equal, right? We all, what do you call that? Um, equality. He gives her equal lefts and rights because she want to be equal, right? She's a woman. So now she got equality. But no matter how young she is, she's disrespecting this grown man. Unless they know he's left, right, left, right. It's over. One, two, three. She's out. And then everybody's mad at him. But who raised this girl? Yes, he needs to have self-discipline, but guess what? Nobody taught this girl that there is consequences. Yes, the police officers can put you in jail. They can handcuff you. You get tased or whatever else, or you might get shot, whatever the case may be. But they're not the only ones that can do damage to you. They're not the only ones you need to respect. You don't just need to respect the law and the judges and everything else. You need to respect people that you come across because one person is going to put you down. They're going to hurt you 
if you do something stupid. If you don't understand that they're going to hurt you, you're going to disrespect that person until that day come and you start seeing the stars or maybe the Grim Reaper. Do you understand? And the problem, again, is because we have too many mothers raising boys where they're not men. Men are going to teach these boys what you should and what you should not do. And there's consequences. A lot of times women are going to say, I don't want my child to be spanked. I don't want them to be hit. I don't want this to happen. You know, I just want them to be loved and I want them to have what I never have. So this child ends up spoiled. And they grow up to be boys in men's bodies where they're like, what, 30 something, 42 years old or something like that. And they listen, these type of men are the most dangerous. They're the most dangerous and they're the most menace of the society. They're the ones who end up in prison most times. They're the ones who get in gangs. These are the type of guys who become white knight betas for women where the woman can be wrong. And because she's his homie, she will call him up because he's raised by his mom to protect women and to uh, 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 be Superman for them to carry their burden. So this girl will call him up and say, hey, you know, my boyfriend did this. This guy over here is talking crazy. I need you to deal with him. He's not going to think about the logic that this girl or woman's a manipulator. He's going to automatically what? Boom. He's going to jump into action, get in his car, or walk in the restaurant, or go into the bathroom where the guy is, or confront this man in front of everybody. Whatever he's going to do, he's doing that because he's programmed by his mama that there is no consequences behind his action and he's supposed to protect women at this level and you'll find this man six feet under eventually. You're going to find him either in prison or you're going to find him on the obituary next Sunday morning because we don't understand there is consequences and sometimes single mothers need to know that there are consequences how they're raising their kids. All of what I'm saying, everything of what, just about everything of what I'm saying, the lesson is this, ladies and gentlemen, the problem is that you have in your westernized world is that people don't get a chance to see. And I'm going to say it like grandma and grandpa used to say. It's a very good statement and it's funny, but it makes sense. Fat means greasy. Have you heard that before? Fat means greasy. <laughs> and so take heed to what I'm saying because you yourself you're going to come across people especially on the road who are driving wreckful they're driving danger they disrespect you they're in the wrong they afflict you and give you the middle finger when you had the right away they will not use a turn signal and they'll jump in front of you they'll jump in front of a truck and most times we will be thinking and I do that myself like where's the police you know where's the cops you know where's the law they're there and they have other things to take care of. But the fact is, it's just that this person haven't met reality. They haven't met real life. But let someone, and it happens, this is where road rage come from. Sometimes, and here's the thing, sometimes road rage don't mean that those people are crazy. Even though I broke this down in one of my audios, there's high stress levels. There's heavy pressure in your country now. People are on the edge. That happens and the depression and the stigma and the overstimulation. I've talked about that already, so we don't have to get into the psychology of why, why they are having this uh, road rage. But the point of the matter is it was warranted eventually. Because if you see sometimes where two cars are battling each other right in front of you, again, you could call it a crazy situation, but what led up to it? If the other person did not become an antagonist if they didn't try to irritate that person or speed up next to them, they would not deal with that. I used to be a motorcycle rider, so I know everything about that as well. Cars will disrespect uh, cruisers and crotch rockets, motorcycles every day. They don't care. And put these motorcycle drivers in jeopardy where they can run this guy over. He has no protection but his helmet and his suit. He can still be crushed. I've seen it happen plenty of times. But the fact of the matter is he's being disrespected and his life is threatened by this dumb ass motorists who don't care and have no respect and responsibility or consequences. So what happens is this motorcycle, uh, this motorcycle rider has to correct that person or knock on their window. He's like, hey, then they roll their window down. 
what the f you was doing? Why why you cut me off like that? Don't you know that was dangerous? Get off your goddamn phone. This is how you get the conflict because the motorcycle rider feels threatened and on the edge. They feel, and they, I mean real feel, and no, they do feel like it is a very treacherous situation to be in and they're trying to teach the driver a lesson to say, hey, you don't cut people off. You need to watch out for other motorcycle riders. Don't drive with your cell phone off. It happens all the time. You not understand what I'm saying? Some people don't, they don't, they don't understand that there's consequence. They don't understand that this is important. But if there's the law involved or a police officer, they still ain't gonna learn their lesson. But if the law was not involved, I'm just saying, as a matter of fact, if they can call the police, the police will not come. They got other things to do. And it was known that this motorcycle rider is gonna pull your ass out of the vehicle and give you the stars that you always wanted to see you're going to stop that bull crap. As a matter of fact, you'll think twice because now every time you go past the motorcycle rider and you think about cutting them off, you're going to be thinking about that guy that got in your face and gave you three stars. You're going to think about that. You're going to think about that guy that knocked on your window that threatened you and probably your life for you being a dumbass because you warranted it. You warranted it by cutting them off and not using your turn signal. And now everybody, everybody, and most times people want to say that the motorcycle driver is crazy or rider. Man, why are you confronting him? Just keep on going, man. Just keep on going. How is he going to keep going and this moron hasn't learned their lesson? The motorcycle rider is trying to tell this motorist and teach them a lesson to say, hey, you've done it to me. You're going to do it to somebody else. And not only that, walking or driving away, that person is not going to learn their lesson. They're going to do it to the next person biker and probably kill him in the process do not understand let's go a little deeper than this why do you think when there's ever a car crash or something like that why are people upset and want to confront the person think about it for a second let's get deep into the psychology even your common average person if you run into them and knock their bumper off, they're going to say, what the hell was you thinking? They want to get in your face and here come an argument. You know, y'all getting ready to get at it. Next thing you know. Why? Because really, you want to teach that person a lesson, but you don't know how. You want to teach this person that they did something very, very stupid. And now your car is bashed up. I know people now personally that will say this and I'm I'm actually proud of them. I'll be honest with you. I don't condone violence, but I'm proud that this is in play because some people need it. I really back them up. As a matter of fact, I'll look the other way and eat some ice cream. Don't come ask me for some video footage. Don't listen. I'm telling you right now. I have no evidence. I don't. In that situation, I'm not recording a damn thing. Don't ask me if I was there, if I seen it. I'm going to walk the other direction have fun because I understand this is what we need sometimes. Some people need to be washed up. They need to be, listen, the laws won't do it. Your mama hasn't done it. She failed because she knocked your daddy out of the house being disrespectful herself and not having accountability. And the environment is passive, is passive and weak. So when I see somebody getting their whoop ass lesson, I'm going to walk the other direction and say, okay, if we get that in abundance, we'll stop this bull crap. We will stop being stupid. So oftentimes, this, that, that individual want to fight you or here you go with the violence. Why? Because they're saying, why did you do that? You took that sharp turn. You should have took that sharp turn. You dumbass. What the, what, what? You was on your cell phone? I see you on your cell phone. The next day, you know. Ah. That happens. Why? Because a lot of you are, listen, you are dumbasses. You are stupid. You haven't learned your lesson. So you'll meet that right person who's going to be your teacher. You know what? I love my teachers. As a matter of fact, 
I respect my teachers that when they are teaching in the classroom, I won't say a damn thing. I will be a very quiet student. I will watch and I will learn. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's the problem here that we're having. That's the problem. So if nobody's coming to their rescue, somebody pick you up, body slam you on top of your hood, then walk away. The hell with insurance. I can guarantee you, you're not going to make that mistake again. You're not. What's the odds? What's the, think about it. I need y'all to really think about it. If there's a motorcycle riding a Harley Davidson, all right, and he's on the highway, and this dummy in a caravan almost run this poor man off the road, and there's no police officers to come to your rescue, and all bets are off, right? Whether you got kids in the caravan or not, you almost killed someone. You almost pit this man six feet under. Guess what? He got kids too. He has a wife at home and probably a brand new child. And you almost deleted this guy while you were not paying attention and probably on your goddamn cell phone. And somewhere along the way, when you get off the highway on the ramp and he confronts you, he gets off his Harley Davidson, take his helmet off, rip the door open, say, man, what the we were thinking? What the you were thinking, man? You almost you almost killed me, man. I don't got man. What the hell you think? You said, man, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, man. I I, I didn't get it. Next thing you know. But you won't hear that though. You won't hear that though. All you hear is And if the thing is, if it's normalized, you will still live to see the next day. And he'd jump on his Harley Davidson. And of course, the wife in the past, oh my God, I can't believe that happened. And the children in the back seat, traumatized with their eyes all big. Right? You know, like deers and in, in, in headlights. But guess what? If this man survives, who's the driver? What? Is, now, again, I told you, I'm not condoling, but I'm just telling you the, the facts here. What are the odds that he's going to do that again? This thing, listen. Think about it. Use your brain. Think about it. What is the probability that he's going to do it again? See, he won't be thinking about the officers giving him a ticket. Listen, the guy in the caravan, he's not going to be thinking about the officers giving him a ticket or going to jail for whatever he's doing illegally on the road. When he picks up his cell phone and if he sees any, I'm talking about any biker, he's going to think twice about doing the same thing that he did before because the odds are there might be another conflict that just might be a reenactment of what happened before. He's going to learn his lesson immediately. That's just like when real men are in a room nine or ten different men are in a room and one of the guys start talking crazy to the next man there is automatically an energy and an acknowledgement that something's going to pop off that there is a immediate consequence of violence immediately so most times men aren't going to talk bullcrap they're going to listen and try to debate the right way because they don't know what that other man is packing. Listen, I'm not talking about a blow horn or, you know, a gun or nothing like that. No, I'm talking about how strong this other person is. They can do some Jackie Chan on your ass or some Bruce Lee. You never know. You know, this person might throw you through the wall. You're not so sure about what's going to happen. So most times when men almost get into a verbal conflict with another man, it is a universal knowledge in his genome that he can get his not his lights knocked out. Do you understand? It's called consequences, not because there's an officer uh, down in the lobby. It have nothing to do with him getting sued or prosecuted. That that's part of it as well. Of some people think about that, but right there, that immediate danger is going to keep that person from acting stupid. That's going to keep. It's not, see, the by, by the time the officer run up there, 
it's already done. He's probably on a stretcher or something like that. But the fact is, he's meeting consequences face to face. He know that one person is going to jump up over the table, and now it's UFC in real time without the referee stopping you, but the people that's in the room. So the fact of the matter is, a lot of times in your westernized world, especially America, there's some parts of America, there's some people in America that's been born with a, with a milk, what do you call that? A milk straw in their mouth. They haven't been born on the farm. You know, they don't know nothing about, you know, real physical activity and fighting and all that. They don't know nothing about that. They've been raised in their mama's basement. So they live their life. It's not just how they deal with other men. It's in every facet. Talking about how you drive, how people talk about each other on their cell phone, backbiting and, and all this unnecessary aggression because they don't know what it's like. They don't understand that there can be immediate danger. Now, if the law was to recede a little bit, people will start waking up. It won't It won't be the consequence of being at fear that there's going to be officer. No, you're going to be at fear that somebody's going to break your jaw and actually knock your ass out. Which for some people, like I said before, that's required. That's going to, that right there is a teaching in itself. So I automatically know as a teacher myself, <laughs> LOL. Well, I am the, I am the professor in this Academy of Wildman. So what does that tell you? However, we will begin to stop the foolishness that we're doing. I had to really think long and hard about it before getting upset about anything. Cause we always deal with bozos in traffic. Especially when they and when they drive slow or they drive too fast, especially when they drive slow. A lot of times people don't respect somebody behind them. They don't. Now, let me give you another example. Now y'all know y'all not gonna like this, but here it is. This is actually real right here. If people are driving too slow in front of you, I'm talking about it, you can drive too slow, it's illegal. There are some there are some states that on the highway that they'll tell you the minimum speed you can drive is maybe 40. The maximum speed is, I mean, the speed limit is 60, minimum is 40. They're telling you, don't go slower than 40 because it's dangerous, you could jeopardize the traffic, accidents can happen, I call them wrecks. Okay, they say that because they're smart. It makes sense, but in some parts of the country and states, even though they might still do it anyway, which is good that, that the law enforcement is actually enforcing that because there's some dumb bozos who are drunk and high and they don't respect people behind them. But there are some parts where people will do that. They'll go 30 miles per hour, speed limit is 70. And it's only one lane and you're behind them. No matter if you honk your horn, you flash your lights at them, they won't move. But let's say that you would not get any consequences for knocking this person off the road or moving them aside with your truck, with your four-wheeler, or maybe even your Honda Civic that you really don't care about because it already has several damages on it anyway. And if it was universally known, or you could say commonly known, that on this highway or in this certain state, if you drive too slow, your funky cheap, retard, plan obsolescent piece of crap is going to be knocked off to the side of the road or pushed aside, I can guarantee you, you're going to decrease the chances of people driving slow because you know, people that are behind you honking their horn, this guy might knock you out. This guy might knock you off the road, especially if he's driving a Ford F-150, a Silverado or a Dodge or an old truck or an old car. Be aware of something that's old and rusty because they don't care about it. <laughs> they, you know, and if they drive us something like that on four wheelers, okay, that means they're prepared to move your ass out of the way for being a dumbass, for being an idiot. So if that was ever prevalent in all the time, I can guarantee you, and it's only common sense. It only this is logic I'm talking about here. What are the odds that most people are going to slow down, especially if it's universally known? Don't you slow down? If you slow down, they're going to knock you off. People are going to start speeding up, whether that's your grandma, maybe that's your, your grandpa that just got his eyes worked on, whether this person's high or drunk, because they're not going to be at fear, listen, for um, 
their lack or their their lack of concentration or focus, they're going to be at fear of that thing behind you. Let me give you another example. Okay, this is a really good example. There are some people who don't jog, they don't run. They're uh, they're heavyweight, they're fat, they're they have issues with their body, and just lazy issues. That's all. They just they're just lazy. Now, let a bulldog chase after him. Let a bulldog chase after him. Let's get her ready to rumble. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're going they're out. They're going to run their ass off. You've never seen this person run before. It's just like a movie, real life stuff. This person never ran in their entire life, but let a bulldog be behind them. Let's get her ready to rumble. They're going to run as fast as they can and drop everything in the process. You have never seen somebody move so fast because they got this dog chasing behind them. Why? Psychology. It's the mind of the average human. They've been lazy their whole life, never running for anything. You don't see them on a treadmill. They don't even want to go for a walk for five minutes. Let a dog come behind. You see this person run like you've never seen them run before. Like, dang, they do track and field? God damn. You'll be thinking maybe we should put a dog behind them so they can do, uh, you know, those, uh, <laughs> you know, those sprints. <laughs> you know, put them in the, uh, the Olympics. You know, have a dog behind them chasing them the, with their life on the line. They'll run as fast as they can, do the hurdles and everything. you would be like, dang, this dude is 60 years old. He's out of there. <laughs> no, but that's that's real talk. That same mindset. Listen, listen, that same mindset will be the same. If you're driving 40 miles per hour too slow and you know that people are known to knock each other off the road for driving too slow, I guarantee you their ass is going to be pushing that gas pedal as hard as they can. Now, yeah, you'll say, well, people might be driving too fast and, you know, people might be overly speeding. There's a thing called common sense. You know, if you're doing the speed limit and that person's just going fast in the speed limit. They want to just run you over. That's a different story. They're not going to understand the law stepping in. And yeah, you're wrong. You know, you're now you're just uh, what do you call that? Uh, vehicular homicide type of stuff. Right now you're you're danger. You're a menace to society. You're just hurting people just to hurt people. Then that person who's doing a speed limit and going at a fair speed, you know, they're they should be allotted. But of course, we can't deal with the common people because sometimes I know it's a messy thing because the mindset of the common average human being is really chaotic and you can't really control it but i'm talking about the basics here of if you get down to the tech the technical thinking of eliminating laziness and bad behavior there's always a solution behind it regardless of trying to get all deep into it and technical of you know people still driving fast and just want to knock people off just because they're trying to get somewhere type of thing that's a different discussion but the fact is i'm talking about solution the solution would be it may, it may be a solution that may lead to other problems, but the fact is it's going to eliminate one specific problem at that time. So people will start speeding up like they're supposed to are getting to the speed limit. As a matter of fact, you would never see anybody lag behind. You won't, you won't see anybody taking a sweet time getting on or off the ramp. They're going to move out of your way because they know if they mess up, they're going to be going in a 360 spin, them in their retarded cheap car. Or it could be the expensive Mercedes. You should be driving the Mercedes like you got some good damn sense. Push that AMG where it need to be. You know, that big V12, V8, V8. You know, get to the speed limit like you should and drive like you got some good damn sense. See, a lot of people don't talk nor think about this kind of stuff, but I'm the one to do it. That's why this is called the Academy of Wow Men. See, a lot of times we rather deal with nonsense and not really think about it. You know, we, I hear this every day. You know, these people are driving slow. They're driving dangerous. This guy cut me off and gave me the middle finger. Oh, really? I'm thinking about it like, oh, y'all deal with it every day. Y'all comfortable with it. You get stressed out. 
you know, you get a hernia over this type of stuff, you get gray hair. I'm always sitting back saying, you know, there's a solution to it. If somebody beat his ass, he'll stop doing that. You know, the next time he rolls his... Listen, if he got checked by someone who hemmed him up on his truck and gave him a black eye and probably made him limp for a couple of weeks, he will not roll his window down and give you the middle finger again. He never will. He's going to think about that time where that individual gave him a lesson. That's just reality. He's going to think about it. Sometimes people need that type of reality. And here's the shangri law. I know I gave you one already, and I'm going to go ahead and call this lesson quits. Okay. A lot of times, most people who are average human beings, they need to hit the brick wall to learn something. There are some kids and teenagers that you can tell them to your face is blue, not to do something. Be careful, right? Don't go here. Don't smoke weed. Don't sell drugs. Be good. Be obedient to the law. Tie your shoes. Pull your pants up. You can say all this stuff. Don't get girls pregnant. Wear a condom, right? Clubs aren't good for you. Watch your music. It's just rap. It's for entertainment. They'll take all that seriously. Regardless of what you say, not all of them, most of them, because they're humans. And the key thing about the human genome and psychologically, the psycho, the psychological bandwidth, sometimes they have to hit the wall in order to learn their lesson. That's the key here. You know that yourself with your kids, the things that you did in your life. There are some people who the doctor will say, Stop drinking. Stop smoking. If you keep doing it, you're going to pass away. And guess what? They would do it anyway. And there they go in the hospital on the gurney. Almost passing away. And then you will hear these people or you have a conversation with that person who was fighting to live. You know what they'll say? I stopped smoking and drinking. Ask them why. Ask them why. Because they almost died. That's why. Because they had to meet the door. They had to meet the wall head on. That's like that with a lot of things. People don't listen to logic and common sense anymore. They don't. Sometimes they need to meet the ground to understand that the ground is real. Like there is hubris. There's pride and there's bad reflection and bad non-accountability that is spread in the millions towards these sick, common people today. All that can be healed with simply letting them see their consequences. Period. You got pride? Let me show you the consequences. Oh, you can do it all by yourself. I can get the bag. I don't need a man. I can live up by myself. I can do everything on my... Okay. If... They meet consequences immediately. They're going to rethink their steps. And actually, as a matter of fact, they're going to wish they can go back in time like, uh, like Marty and change their decisions. That's just the average person. That's the same with everything. Sometimes you can't get mad at them. Stupid is stupid. Sometimes you can't get mad at people. All you can do is realize it's just because they haven't met consequences yet. Everybody's so afraid of the law and the police officer, the thing about getting sued. Yeah, that's one part of what could happen. And it's to be respected. But we need to understand that there's consequences before that. Don't just fear or respect the law. Fear that this person, that you might hit a brick wall. Some people may survive and some people may not. You need to fear the wall. Don't fear the consequences of being locked up or getting some type of, you know, case. That's one thing. Yeah, we don't want that. But if we start respecting people and understand that we are on stupid sometimes, you're not going to run your mouth on people. You're not going to try to be a Karen. You're not going to rat them out. You're not going to sit here and get in their face. You're not going to say, oh, look at this man. Oh, like a woman, for example. Not all of them. She's beating on this man's chest and punching him in the face and probably trying to kick him in the genitals, right? She'll do that because she know the police officer's on his way. 
So she's automatically going to say, I can disrespect this man. Now, if the police op police officer say, I'm not showing up, ma'am, uh, have a nice day. This is your problem. You poke the bear. Be responsible for your actions. I guarantee you she's not going to even put us. She's not going to put her hand on the six foot tall, 200 and something pound guy. Because all he got to do is ball his fist up and pop right on top of the head. And she's asleep for a little while. And then she'll wake up and he'll say, uh, have you learned your lesson? Oh, yeah. Which way did he go, George? <laughs> She'll never talk back to him. She would never put her hands on him. Now, again, I'm not condoning violence, just to remind you. But equal rights is equal lefts. You know, you give, listen, whatever you dish, you should be able to receive. Don't sit here and think, I ain't going to go there. I'm not going there. The reason why a lot of women think that they can do that because it's such an imbalanced system that we have because everybody want to come down on men. It's always the man's fault. The police officers show up. What did you do, man? Always the man. But yet she's the antagonist. She's the one kicking him in the genitals so he can't get erect or have kids anymore. You understand what I'm saying? She's bashing his car out, knocking off his favorite trophies on the on the shelf, just be all because he don't want to do what she want him to do. But she wants to use the state and the law to manipulate this guy in the situation. And we want to call that equality. No equality if she ball up her little bitty fist and swing it at his juggler and make him lose breath or consciousness. Let him turn around and do the same thing. How is that not equal? He just gave her what she and probably with the same force. She can't handle it. You know, she'll swing at him with such power and force. And if that power and force is given back to her at an equal uh, level, guess what? She can't handle it. She realized, oh, my God, that's what it feels like. Uh, Yeah. It will stop. I'm, I'm telling you, it will stop. If she slap him and he slaps her, she ain't going to slap him again because she don't want to get slapped again. That's just the, that's the way humans think. She's not going to want to do it again. She's not going to want to because she don't want she don't want to know what it feel like. I'm not saying that you should do it. I'm speaking real life here. People get away with doing damage because we are in an unbalanced time. We don't know what equality is. We don't know what fair is. We don't even know what it means to be a right human being until we meet that wall, until consequences come. Why do you have to be so damn stupid to wait until your face is on the ground to realize you did something stupid because you haven't met the consequences yet. If you know that the that fire burns, you're not going to put your ass in fire. So if we start, I'm not saying again, I'm not condoning it, but if that was to happen, I guarantee you a, lo a, a large percentage of these sick individual who needs a doctor in psychology and some healing that are walking around your country they will immediately either disappear or they're going to stop their bad behavior because we're going to immediately start correcting it. It's going to be corrected overnight. But because it can't be done and it may not ever happen, guess what? we got to deal with these people becoming a cancer to society or a menace to your success. And maybe you rely. It happens all the time. And who's to say? You understand that some people, what happened? Here's, here, let me go ahead and do this. Let me go ahead and do this. Because this is real right here. Let's go ahead and get gritty. We're going to get gritty with this one. And then I'm going to go ahead and call it quits. Because I said it before, but I'll say it again. Do you know that because one person didn't meet their consequence, that means a car who was driving was threatened by another car and let it slide. Didn't say nothing because they didn't want to get a case, right? This person who was talking crazy and an alcoholic didn't get body slammed. So they still think that they're okay with their bad lifestyle, right? What happens is on the news, here it is. Don't take my word for it. Do your own research. If you notice on your dumb phone, on the news and around your country, you notice that alcoholic person ran into somebody and actually deleted them and their family because he wasn't checked. Wait a minute. Let's go further. Do you know that that uh, uh, that man who was back talking 
and talking crazy to people and nobody checked them. He got in his truck. Listen, he got in his truck and ran his truck into the store and tried to and actually deleted two people who were sitting in the chairs. Why? Because nobody never checked him before and said, shut your damn mouth or get hurt. Did you know that a lot of people who don't meet consequences soon at a very fair and safe level, like they get their ass beat outside, if they never meet that, they'll live their entire life not understanding the damages that they're doing until they actually do damage to somebody, like the bully, like Biff. Biff tried to delete McFly. Listen, he tried to delete his life. He drove in the tunnel with his car, with that magazine, right? With the, the black car. He tried to delete Marty McFly. He tried to run this guy over on his skateboard. I'm telling you, that's how some people are with these sick mindedness because they're bullies. Nobody put them on check. Nobody checked them. So a lot of people in your country, in your world and in these conditions, they will keep doing that until they actually hurt someone and delete them. That's the way that they operate. And whose fault is it? Yes, they're going to meet the law. Of course, they get locked away. Of course, they're going to have to, they'll be uh, prosecuted and all that. But they already did their damage, dummy. You see this person beating up cats and dogs and, and experimenting on frogs and putting deer heads on their wall, you know, illegally and right you know, stepping on people and cussing people out. Nobody want to check them. Nobody got balls. Everybody's walking around with vaginas, right? And there will be, there'll come one day where he will actually do the damage. I always talk about saving lives and zero tolerance. And a lot of times is, if you listen to my audios, I do a lot of preventative maintenance. And it doesn't reach enough ears. There's not enough likes when y'all should be liking this and subscribing to help. There's some people who need to hear this type of stuff. And I can only, because I'm only one man. Okay, I'm only one person. Well, I have like three companions. Like I said, I'm actually four people, but I guess. But... I'm only one person as the leader and the king, you know, of this relationship that I have with my girls. But I'm only one person with this type of information here that I can't reach everyone. And you know, I can't teach every person. I try to bring awareness to the world. So we always depend on you, the listener, to like it. Smash that like button, subscribe, and send it. That way people can start getting messages like this. It may not be as, as interesting as a Disney Channel show or, uh, you know, other podcasts that are flipping around like like uh, uh, clowns for you. But this is raw information that goes to the veins that might help individuals who are doing these kind of things. Because sometimes we don't understand that there's a back slap to a slap. <laughs> you understand? And, and a lot of times we that's the issue in your country. That's the issue with people. If somebody is is out of control, they're delusional, like a lot of your westernized people, I dare not say. Uh, they living in a space bubble. You know, they're in the first world country and think everything is hunky-dory and good. That's because they don't know what hardship is. They haven't been slapped. They haven't been body slapped. They haven't dealt with reality. And they'll continue on in their life, hurting people in their process of ignorance and delusion until something dramatic happened where they truly do damage to people. Or you could say some people there's some this has been on the news as well. You have this kid, this 17 year old boy who's been, again, torturing cats, torturing dogs, you know, burning his sister's Barbie dolls and things like that, practicing, practicing on what he's going to do to average actual people, maybe on a massive scale. And so the parents or friends, other people never confront them. They're scared of this person. Oh, my God. This, and he might be one of those big, you know, corn fed, silver spoon type of dudes where everybody's like, oh, I'm not going to deal with this guy. No, I ain't going to try to confront him because he's going to beat me up. 
So, you know, they become passive, feminized, and weak until this actual person really hurt people. And then it's all over the news that, you know, people could have prevented this from happening. And, you know, they start to do a, a, a background check on this person. You know, years ago in the past, you know, he was suspended from school. Once upon a time, he was a bully. It was told he was burning deer in the backyard and all this. Oh, then why did y'all wait 12 years later after he went into the school and y'all get my drift? Are you understanding what I'm saying to do? I had to put this on chalkboard for you dummies. It can be prevented. Same as what I was talking about before. This can also extend to further conversations and multiple, multiple uh, angles. But I'm going to have to call it quits here. So the lesson is some people need a lesson. And their consequences doesn't come swift enough nor come from the right sources. And a lot of times you remove the, the father out of the picture. And you just have a single mother raised home. It's just going to perpetuate and continue the rat will. And those are the average people that you see. They cutting you off. They disrespecting you. They flicking you in the middle of the road, even though they know they're wrong. They giving you the ugly eye and calling you a B because you're legal and you're doing the right thing. It's because these people are menaces to the society and they're made to be on the track of destruction. All you can do is move out of the way and let them have their fun until they meet the wall.